Here's a comparison review between four large mice. We have the Steel Series Rival 300, Razor Mamba Tournament Edition, Death Out of Chroma, and also the Zowie Easy 2A. Overall, I like the quality of the buttons on the Rival 300. The side buttons are very good. Left and right click are a bit spongy, but not uncomfortable, and they feel quite good in game too. The scroll wheel doesn't give too much tactile feedback, not to the point of the G303, but it should still give enough for the CS players out there who want to use it. The DPI button is raised on a ridge, so it's unlikely that you'll press it by accident. Mamba Tournament. Overall, I think the side buttons are quite good. Left and right are quite hard to click in, but if you have heavy fingers, that might actually be a good thing for you. Although I have heard that someone was accidentally clicking the right button in a lot. So it really depends on the quality of mouse that you get and how you actually rest your fingers on it. The scroll wheel is easy to press in. It doesn't give much tactile feedback at all. So it might be hard to say scroll up twice without doing it three times. The DPI buttons have no protection, so I have accidentally clicked them in from time to time, mainly the bottom one. Otherwise, they're quite comfortable to use and I like having the addition there so I can cycle through the DPIs or bind them to something else. Death out of chroma. So first up, there's more tactile feedback on this one. I think that'll suit more gamers. As usual, it can rattle when going up. Left and right feel crisp and responsive. And the side buttons, also quite nice as far as side buttons go. Easy 2A. So one of my problems with this mouse is the side buttons. You can see here how much it actually travels in. Compared with, say, the Death Adder, there's barely anything on the Death Adder yet. This collapses maybe twice, even three times the distance. Even compared with the Steel Series Rival, it has a bit more travel, but still not to the point where it actually feels flimsy. And I think that the EC2 A buttons are going to break eventually. Maybe I'm wrong about that, they still haven't broken, but I really don't like having that much travel on those. Definitely prefer the Rival 300 or the Death Adder type buttons. Apparently, the left and right click weren't good enough on the EC2 A, so BenQ are upgrading them with, I think, Omron switches. But personally, I quite like these. They're crisp, you can click them in very quickly. And to me, they feel good. I've never accidentally clicked them in. Mouse 3 is quite tight to press in. And the scroll actually gives you good tactile feedback, but I have heard that they break. Mine's still okay, but be wary of that. As for textures on the Steel Series Rival 300 White, this is just a glossy plastic on top, and there's a bit of a spiky rubber coat on the side. None of which are uncomfortable, it feels quite good in the hand, but I have heard that the Black Edition has a smooth rubber coat. And I'm going to assume that it's more like this on the Rival 100. If I had to choose between the two, I'd probably go the rubber coat because I do like it. But again, I don't mind the glossy plastic at all. On the Mamba Tournament Edition, you do have rubber pads on the sides, but the top is just a textured plastic. It doesn't feel high quality, but it doesn't feel low quality either. It's somewhere in between and it should be durable. Same goes for the Death Out of Chroma. It does have smaller pads than the Mumba Tournament, as you can see there, but they seem to be right where your fingers are. And on top, again, it's just a texturized plastic. The EC2A has high quality plastics. They're all smooth and there's no texture on them. And it actually feels more solid than the other three. Checking the weights with just a little bit of cable overhanging. The Rival 300 is 104 grams. Mumba Tournament Edition is 97. Death Out of Chroma is 100. And the EC2A is 96. So the Rival 300 is the heaviest, but I haven't had a problem with the weight of any of these mice. For their sizes, I think they're very well proportioned. If you look at the sizes, the Rival 300 is actually 13 centimeters long, 5.5 centimeters wide where you'll put your fingers, so in the middle, and seven centimeters at the back, roughly where your palm will be. And it's about four centimeters tall. Although it's a large mouse, it actually feels medium to large, so somewhere in between. The Mamba Tournament Edition is 12.5 centimeters long, 6.5 centimeters where you'll put your fingers, 7 centimeters at the back, and again, roughly 4 centimeters tall. Because of its width, where your fingers go, it actually feels like a large mouse. And the Death Out of Chroma is roughly the same size, so again, it feels large. The EC2A is a bit different to the others. It's 12 centimeters by 5.5 at the fingers and 6.5 at the back. So while it's about the same height at 4 centimeters tall, it's more of a medium mouse. So if you want one that's more like the size of the Death Adder, then you'll need the EC1A. So the EC2A is definitely the smallest of the lot, and it actually feels medium, maybe even too small, because it's only got that 5.5 centimeter width where your fingers go. Now all four of these mice have a fairly safe shape, which means that you have plenty of room for your fingers. Very unlikely that you're going to accidentally click the buttons on the sides. This one I think suits palm grip, 
claw grip, but it's a bit hard to fingertip grip unless you do have big hands. I think that the Mamba suits all grip styles, so palm, claw, and even fingertip, but again it's going to depend on the size of your hand. Because the shapes are so similar on the Mamba and the Death Adder, the same applies to both. You'll just find that the Mamba has less curvature on the sides, as you can see there. The EC2A again will fit all grip styles. It's actually very similar to the Mamba in shape, as the edges aren't too pronounced, but they do have some slight curvature to them. And you can see even the hump in the back is roughly at the same place. In a quick comparison, same for the Death Adder. Personally, I find that the Death Adder curves are a bit too strong, because it forces my fingers to go on an angle when holding it. I'd rather have my fingers straighter like that. But that's up to hand size and how you hold it. In terms of aiming ability, I think it's the width across the base here that really affects how easy or harder the mouse is to aim. The Death Adder Chroma for me is just simply too wide. 6.5cm where my fingers are, I just can't seem to control it as well as say the EC2A which has 5.5cm so that 1cm difference makes all the difference between hitting hard shots and missing them. But as you'll see from these videos, my aim can still be pretty good with the Death Adder. What I'm talking about here is when it's 1 vs 1 and it's totally focused on aiming, I'm just not as comfortable. In big games, I can definitely still aim the mouse, but when I'm really pressured, that's when it becomes a problem. And that's why it's important that you get a mouse that's going to suit your grip style and your hand size, because just that little variation in the width can be the difference between winning and losing. And here's a bonus video where I shot a grenade off a wall, and you'll see here that three 100s come up on the screen. That means that the grenade hit three people and took the full amount of damage off them. Funny stuff, but I could have done that with any mouse. It's not really attributed to the death battle. Anyway, so the width of the Rifle 300, because it's only 5.5 centimeters across here too, it seems to be that perfect size for me. With a hand at 185 centimeters, I feel I can really aim mice like this. But because it is still a large mouse, I do struggle with it compared to the EC2A. Because of my hand size and grip style, if I had to choose between the Death Adder and the Rifle 300, I would definitely go the Rifle 300. I'm not sure how those with bigger hands find this, but so far I've heard a lot of people say good things about the Rifle 300, so I'm assuming that they prefer it over the Death Adder too. If you can confirm otherwise, please leave a comment below for me. The other thing that's important with aiming is of course the sensor. Three of these have really good sensors. They perform well, none of them spin out, they all track small movements, they can do 400 DPI, they're all really good. The one that's not good is the Mamba Tournament Edition. A lot of people say that it has acceleration, but I've tested the acceleration and I couldn't find it. What I did find was there is some latency to it, and because it can draw really straight lines in the line test, it seems like Razer have added some kind of smoothing maybe. Just a guess, I don't know exactly and I don't know how I can prove it other than doing the line test, but the correlation does seem that. And lastly, in precision aim testing, this doesn't seem to track the movements. So if you move it really slowly, it won't even move. So two or three problems with the Mamba Tournament means I definitely don't recommend this for any competitive play. If you're playing first person shooters at a competitive level, you want either the Rival 300, Death Out of Chroma, or EC1 or 2A. For the liftoff distance, the Rival 300 can only handle one DVD. It can't handle two, so that means it's quite low. Probably between 1.4mm and 2.8. The Razer Mamba Tournament and Death Out of Chroma can both set their liftoff distances in the software, so you can have it high or really low. At the moment, I've got it less than a DVD. And the EC2A seems to have the same liftoff distance as the Rival 300, so it can track on one DVD, but not two. As for software, you use Razer Synapse for the Death Adder and the Mamba. You can set the DPI to whatever you like, from 100 all the way to 16,000 for the Mamba and that goes up in increments of 50 and a nice feature you can actually type in the one you want just like that and it will apply it. In the Steel Series software you can change the CPI from 50 all the way to 6500 it goes in increments of 50 and of course you can just type it in just like that as well. And of course the EC2A has no software it's all on the mouse so if you want to change DPI it's down below. Red means 400, pink means 800 Blue means 1600, green means 3200. The default polling rate is set to 1000, but if you're going to change that, you'd need to hold in a sequence of buttons. Please check my review where I explain how to do that. And that's why this mouse is only for competitive players. So I hope that wasn't too much information for you to take in, but let me simplify it for you. The Rival 300 is a medium mouse in a big mouse disguise. Even with an 18.5cm hand, it feels good. It's well built, there's no rattle, it's solid. It's a bit more expensive than what I expected, but now that I've used it, it's definitely worth it. Highly recommended for first person shooter players, and because the buttons feel good too, you could use it in MOBAs and RTS 
This is just a solid good mouse. If you want a mouse with pretty lights, you can't go past the Razer Mamba. Tilt wheel, DPI buttons, in the comfortable shape of a death adder, this is a great mouse, but I don't recommend it for competitive play because of the sensor issues that I mentioned. But if you like that shape in a big mouse size, the Death Adder Chroma does offer the RGB light still, just nothing is pretty, but it has an extremely good sensor. It's extremely responsive, really good for first person shooters, and the clicks feel nice too, so it can probably use for Mobro and RTS as well. I'd be happy using the Death Adder in competitive play if my handle was bigger. If you just want a practical mouse and no frills, the Zowie EC2A is actually my favourite. For my hand size with the really slim base, this is essentially a small Death Adder but with high quality plastics, and for me it feels much better in the hand. It's a little expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it. So I hope that helps. I have reviewed each of these individually, so click the links on screen if you want more information on any of them. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and of course subscribe for more videos like these. If you want to purchase any of these mice, I'll leave some Amazon links in the description for you. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.